So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of work on bids to get through, um, and uh, and potentially a lot of work on to get through. I think it is a thing of great hope and joy that, that we have uh, potential bidders all the way through 2025. Wow. That's very nice because it says that, that people still want to do this crazy stuff. We won't need another booze break, Jim. Man up. <laughs> Drink some water. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That was actually totally accidental. Unlike somebody else's pun earlier today. Um, so uh, we have a t we have a bid for 2019. It is Dublin's Fair City with my friend Seamus Bacon, <laughs> who is doing it right. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> my mother was my mother was a Shannon, so you know I'm feeling pretty good about this whole thing. Anytime you want. Okay, thank you very much. Dear Brit, uh Seamus to Mark Una Sun and Dom. Tommy on Kohir Lost Cushion. They go all your heart of fear. Fin in a day. Carshit Crinu. Fish cake, oleacta, down it. Did he just say fish cake? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is James Bacon. I'm the bid chair for the Dublin 2019 World Cup bid. We have been busy. We want an Irish World Cup. We want to spread that message. We continue to work with the Convention Centre Dublin in Dublin City Centre. We have been talking to Dublin City Council about how we can have Worldcon events throughout the city. Social media and outreach have been continuing at pace. We are recruiting worldwide, and only three weeks ago, in Barcelona at the Eurocon, our Chinese agent had a meeting with our head of promotions. We're currently forming the board and constitution for the convention. Next slide. Dublin is a small city. It is 1,028 years old. We will be using a variety of accommodation. We're looking at 30 properties in total with 2,250 rooms. 90% of those properties will be within 1.5 miles of the Convention Centre Dublin. We hope that most of our properties will be within 10 minutes of the Convention Centre or within 5 minutes of the tram. This slide here is just a sample of room rates which include breakfast and tax, which is common in Ireland and the way room rates are offered. Next slide, please. Dublin is different to North American cities. It's fantastic, you'll love it. <laughs> we don't have huge hotels, but we do have excellent public transport. This slide here shows accommodation rates without breakfast and tax included, to help illustrate comparative costs in prices that you're more used to. Within a Dublin hotel, the natural way is you get a big hearty breakfast to see you through the beginning of the day, and taxes are included in the rates. Next slide, please. Here we are now. I was back in Dublin three weeks ago, and I called, unannounced now I should say, but called into the, the monthly volunteer meetup this is currently being held in one of the hotels that we hope to use. This is really important to us. We really wanted to host an Irish World Cup. All of our volunteers are crucial to that. But I'm very proud that at home we have these monthly meetings taking place at this stage. Next slide. We want to bring as many people as possible to an Irish World Cup. At Mac 2, many of our bid team members worked very hard indeed. They gained excellent experience. They helped out. Many bottoms died. We gained <laughs> 1,000 supporters. Here are these photographs. We can see the team in the top left at Novacon in Nottingham in England. Down the bottom left, you can see our outreach activities at Dublin Comic Con, also in the Convention Centre Dublin, 
which had 17,000 visitors. We gave away 2,500 science fiction books to willing fans who were excited to welcome Worldcon to Ireland. And there we see some of our team at the Eurocon in Barcelona. For some reason, people want to come to Ireland. Next slide, please. It is also wonderful that people want to work on an Irish Worldcon. Here are some of our recruits. I still can't get over the fact that my own name is up there. <laughs> it's important to have a balance of local and international, as well as Worldcon experience on the team. I am proud to say, most of all know that these people are very competent. I've worked with them, I've watched them, many of whom I've learned from. I've worked for some of them, and they've all been hard-working, great fun, and dedicated. If we win the bid to hold an Irish Worldcon, all I can say is, I look forward to us all bringing a Worldcon to you. Next slide, please. <laughs> this is historically an interesting piece. What have you done for Ireland? Have you answered the call? We know people want an Irish world come. We want it. But I hope you want it. We need that. And we need your help to do it. Uh -huh. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Piece of clarification on your slides. Yeah, sure. Under Vince Stafferty's name, it said Weapon X. You have weaponized Vince <laughs> That's correct. If I do something really badly wrong, he'll take me around the back of the venue. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll phone my mom. <laughs> and for an Irish boy, that's a hard thing. Isn't it? <laughs> um, I, I, one question we had to, that, that someone had asked. Um, that uh, Belfast is bidding for a Eurocon the week after Dublin. Are you open to other European cities working with you if they wish to bid? Oh, absolutely. At the moment, the Euro Eurocon just happened in Barcelona. So uh, future bids were announced, and one of those future bids was for Belfast in 2019. Uh, we are totally open at this stage. If any other city steps forward, they're always welcome, um, just like Longcon. Uh, we are happy to work with whoever wins that uh, vote. Uh, the vote will be in Dortmund. Uh, is it Dortmund? Uh, it will be in Dortmund then. And then basically we'll, we'll be happy to work with them for whoever wins. We welcome whoever wins. Um, but Belfast did uh, say they wanted to run a Eurocon the weekend after Dublin. Um, in, and obviously that's sort of following a different model. But Dublin, we are happy to work with whoever wins that Eurocon bid. Thank you. So, um, your hotels are spread, not, not substantially, but at least reasonably well spread. How many of the um, facilities are actually adjacent or within a block of your um, convention center? Within the block, we've got about five hotels, which are um, close. And the room count in those? Yeah, they'll be in the hundreds. So, probably we're around 400 at that stage. And related to that, um, given the, the distances involved, what's the accessibility situation of so, Dublin's well, public transport and the hotels? So we have a system called uh, the, the Lewis, which uh, is Irish for sort of get there faster, really. And, um, <laughs> and um, basically it's a tram system which is fully accessible. It's quite modern, it was only built in the last 15 years. So they blow floor entries. They're totally accessible to wheelchairs. The nearest stop is Mare Street, which is literally just behind the convention center Dublin. And that tram system runs through the city all along from east to west and also connects north and south. So um, because we've got such a wide amount of properties and because there are laws regarding having accessible rooms, we would hope there'd be more options for those who uh, uh, require them. And then hopefully they'll be, you know, everyone will be very close to the tram to get them straight to the hotel needs to be. But uh, we'll have to look after people as best we can, particularly those who need to be accommodated closer to the convention centre. And finally, related to the facilities again, um, are you looking at doing a, a traditional blocked, assisted type um, booking facility for those for hotels rather than the free-for-all situation that Helsinki provided? So we, we need to be absolutely clear here what we're doing. We said that we were hoping to have 2,250 rooms available. We'll make them available at the same time at a given date, which we'll let everyone know. That will be organized through a, a partner, just as if it's happened in Glasgow. But we're not tied into those rooms. People don't have to book those rooms. Just like anywhere else, if people want to look elsewhere, 
We will have student accommodation, which we've already got around uh, 250 rooms, for which are good and we want to get more. There will also be new buildings, which will hopefully be apartments. But if people want to do their own thing, that's absolutely welcome. That will be fine. It doesn't jeopardize our arrangement with the venue as hotels, which are also the convention site might. But yes, we will hopefully have one large box and that will be managed through one booking agency. Some uh, US cities are projecting Airbnb. Is Airbnb or something like it in Dublin? Actually, Airbnb is quite strong in Ireland um, and uh, we don't expect it to disappear. Okay. Um, I, I have uh, two questions that people gave me, one of which is actually covered with wine and what looks like fudge. <laughs> It says, sure. or blood. it says, how would you describe the most impressive aspect of your bid? <laughs> I, think, I think Ireland is the most impressive aspect of our bid. I think bringing people to Ireland is phenomenal. It's the first time we're going to be in this country. I think bringing Worldcon to a new country is a huge step. There is going to be Irish programming in Irish in another language. You know, I guarantee you, somebody will teach you how to curse in Irish. <laughs> It's going to be a great time. We are a different type of fandom. There's a beautifully relaxed feeling. People will make you feel welcome. And Dublin is a fantastically small city with heaps of heritage. You know, you look at something like the Trinity College Long Room Library, which is phenomenal in its own right and houses the Buck and Kells, but it's also been in Star Wars. You know, we have it all. Um, and related to the idea that Ireland is your most wonderful um, Bid, uh, part of, uh, so to, to your bid is the question, and I am not making this up. Will we meet your mom? <laughs> well, my, actually, my mom turned. So we were doing one of the tours, an open tour with all anybody who wanted to go along, and about 70 people came along on a bus from Shamrock Town to the actual convention centre in Dublin. And I was standing listening to the lady who was doing the tour. And uh, next thing you know, she said, we're going to split into two groups, and I'm going to take one group, and my colleagues are going to take another group. And I stepped backwards, and I turned around and said, I'm really sorry. I said, hello, Mom, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom reckons that, she, you know, it's probably off um, message a little bit, but my mom, when she visited the center, said it was the most amazing thing ever. And when she saw it, she was on the top floor, which is an amazing view of the Wicklow Mountains, and of the city, she said, you know, it really made her proud. And that's really cool. I will tell you, somebody, whose mother attended the World Con, she cheered that it was really cool. That's good. <laughs> Everybody lied so kindly to it. <laughs> That's not my mom, she'll see you lying. Okay, so from a political situation, do you guys see Brexit as being any real problem for you? Um, particularly for, for touristing, for moving around, for, for people who want to do golf fast afterwards? Not really. You know, it's too early to say how Brexit is going to work out for anybody, to be honest. Um, there is a common travel area between Ireland and Britain for some time, which predates the European Union, so that may still continue. We just have to see what happens. One of the things that we'll be working to make sure we do is make sure that the British fans, if there's an issue, are, are well accommodated, because that might change for them. But, to be honest, it's so far away yet to see what's going to occur. Um, we don't do business yet. One thing currently, which may change, of course, is that our hotel rooms have gotten cheaper because the dollar got stronger. So that's something that happened. But, you know, that can change. Please, you know, be aware. Come the time when our hotels are released, you know, currencies go up and go down. Um, what's the one thing that you would like your world con to be remembered for? I mean, besides the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I really want people to have a great time. I want them to come to the convention and just really enjoy themselves. There's going to be so much going on, and, we, and I hope such a good feel at the convention that I just hope that they leave saying that was phenomenal, and that it was a work on that they will remember, and that they have a fantastic memory of Dublin and Ireland. I have to say that I went to the Eurocon that you had there after um, London, and my main memory of Ireland is horizontal rain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, can you tell me whether that was an aberration or, or you know, pretty much the regular thing? Uh, so you, was there a question? Was that an aberration or is it a regular thing? So actually, if you look at the statistics for weather during August, it's not that too bad. There does occasionally be a bit of rain. But actually, it's not as bad as that. But there can be rain in certain parts of the country, and um, you know, and you just have to address for it. I will tell you that the one time we went went to Ireland, we had rain for half of one day. It was in the low 70s, and the sun was shining, 
for six days. And if we come to your world con, we will bring that juju with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there will be that nice sunshine. Are, are you sure your site's going to be big enough? How, how big? Yeah, we, we predicted, we looked at some predictions based on Glasgow's membership. And, you know, we expect somewhere in the region of 4,500 people, which we expect to be more than able to easily accommodate. We can reckon we can accommodate easily up to about 5,000 people. It shouldn't be a problem. And, you know, obviously, we, one of the things that World Cons are quite good at is tracking and looking at memberships. We've got lots of data to call on, and we've got good analysts to look at it. And, you know, if we think there's a concern, we'll address it at the right time. Do you have any ability to expand? I mean, the convention said it's kind of a well, you space. know, only about a week ago I found a website that sells inflatable Irish bars. <laughs> <laughs> of the committee, I see this video, they'll be going, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so there are, oh, there's 30. Do they oh. float? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be giving me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the bar. Go <laughs> to <laughs> see us. <laughs> Next stop, Liverpool. <laughs> I think that there, there, there's some space. There are other options. But to be honest, the convention center is such a beautiful venue. And we, as I said, we had to, uh, the Comic Con, which saw 17,000 people pass through from the weekend. We were there and we're watching them or we're looking at what the Convention Center can manage and we'll be monitoring it closely. But we do actually have some options. Okay. I think we're good. Fantastic. Uh, and thank you so very much. Very well. Can we get an Irish Thank you so very much for the bride.